All right, so we're gonna we're gonna segue now into our uh, program. Um, uh, Jan Hagen, WB5JAN, is uh, from originally San Diego area and uh, retired after a very successful career. And now he's here at Bella Vista. So he, he was out of the hobby for a little while, and that's pretty common that people, you know, uh, life gets in the way, and then they're, they're not doing it for a while, and then all of a sudden they retire and and remember how great this hobby is and gets back into it. Well, a lot of those people that have done that, they jump in with both feet, and uh, and Jan's one of those. And so he's going to talk tonight about Parks on the Air and how he's been very successful. He's had either a thousand contacts or very close to a thousand uh, parks on the air in a very short period of time. And so this presentation is going to be uh, very, very interesting. And if you'd like to get on the air, uh, parks, you, there are parks on the air quite a bit. So I'm not gonna uh, delay any further. Let's welcome Jan. Uh, welcome everybody. I'm glad everybody survived the weather and the traffic. I don't know about you, but when I got here a little earlier, it was forever getting on, on the road to get here. So thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Tom and Don, for asking me to share a little bit about Parks on the Air. I'm not an expert. I'm just a guy who loves to do it. And so what I'm hoping is maybe a little bit of my enthusiasm will rub off on you, but I'm certainly not an expert. Uh, this is kind of an overview I want to share with you. And so I hope that uh, you'll be as excited as I am to participate in Parks on the Air. Um, as I was trying to put together the uh, presentation, I was thinking about uh, everything that you need for Parks on the Air. And it occurred to me in trying to put this slideshow together with all these slides, I, I only need one slide. I only need one slide to show you what you need for, for Parks on the Air. So let me just show you that and maybe we'll be done with it and it'll be a short program and we can move on. Have some of Bill's uh, treats. There you go. If you got that, you got it. That's what you need for Parks on the Air. Um, actually, uh, you don't need anywhere near all of that. Uh, actually, with Parks on the Air, sometimes uh, less is more, you know. Yes? Absolutely, and I'm going to talk about that a little later, but thank you. Absolutely. So uh, what is Parks on the Air? Let's, let's talk about that first to make sure we're all on the same plane there. Uh, POTA is about radio operators visiting parks and making contacts from within those parks to other radio operators at any other location. It's as simple as that. The whole idea of Parks on the Air is to have fun. It's all about having fun. Either getting out to a park to operate uh, or hunting low power operators in some beautiful park locations. And it's a kick just to kind of listen to some of the places where people are because I've been to some of those and some I really want to go to and haven't been, but I can be there vicariously. Let's see here. So a little bit of technical stuff, we're gonna to try to keep this to a minimum, but just so we use the same terms, an activator, uh, that's one of the terms. That is basically a licensed amateur who is in a park uh, and he's at a POTA designated park. It has to be one that is designated by the POTA organization uh, and makes contacts with other licensed amateurs. A hunter, and that's what primarily I have done to this point, is any other licensed radio amateur who contacts an activator at a park. Um, a hunter can also be an activator, and I've done that, activating but also hunting at the same time. And then an activity, and we'll kind of talk about activities and activations. An activity is the act of an activator visiting a park intending to operate parks on the air. So uh, the, you can have an activity that is successful and an activity that's not successful. And we'll kind of talk about what, what that is and what that difference is. So a little bit about the history of uh, Parks on the Air. Um, 
the predecessor to this was the National Parks on the Air program through the ARRL in um, 2000, or, yeah, 2016. Uh, and as it says here, this is right from their website, throughout 2016, Amateur Radio will be helping the National Park Service celebrate their 100th anniversary. Hams from across the country will activate NPS units, promote the National Park Service, and showcase amateur radio to the public. So they thought they would set up these special event stations in parks everywhere else and uh, across the country and hopefully have amateurs that would uh, participate and do that. Well, it turns out it was a hit. People loved doing this, taking their equipment to the national parks. And of course, it was of a lot of goodwill for amateur radio. People are asking, what's that all about? What are you doing? And uh, a lot of conversation about amateur radio. And of course, if you're a hunter, that was a kick too, to be able to reach people in all the different national parks. So it was great. Everything was wonderful. And then the year ended and the fun stopped. 2016 ended, it was the, the 100th uh, anniversary of the National Park Service. And so what are we gonna do next? So the, Nash, or the National um, Parks on the Air program became Parks on the Air, uh, which is a nonprofit organization started in early 2017 when the ARRL's program uh, ended. A group of volunteers, and it's run by volunteers, and it is a nonprofit, wanted to continue the fun beyond the one year event, and thus POTA was born. So, hadn't been around long, but it sure has taken off. Now, getting started with POTA can happen any one of two paths. Either as the activator, the one going out to one of the parks, one of the POTA parks to make contacts, uh, or as a hunter, again, we're using those terms, uh, who is trying to contact someone in a park. So the easiest way to participate in POTA and get started is as a hunter. So let's start there. Let's start talking about being a hunter and then we'll kind of move on from there. Uh, as a hunter, you don't have to be in a designated park. You can respond to activators from your home, mobile, uh, if you're out camping somewhere, anywhere portable, anywhere. Uh, you don't have to be anywhere to be able to hunt wherever it's convenient for you. So that makes that kind of nice. Uh, you can use, and we're gonna be seeing this website, you can use the poda.app website to find activators, to find where they are. How do you know which park is being activated, who's doing what, where they are, what frequency? There's a website where people are spotted, and if you're not sure what that term is, we'll, we'll find out here in a little bit. Uh, so you can find them and then try to raise them. That's all part of the hunt, and the hunt is at least what got me going. I really enjoyed the hunt and finding parks, and when I'd find something, oh, Silver Strand State Beach in Coronado in San Diego. I've camped there many times. I wonder if I can reach the gal who's there. And sure enough, when we talked about which site she was in. I knew that site. I'd been there too. What a kick that was. So that's kind of fun to do it like that. Best of all, as a hunter, you have no requirement to submit logs to gain credit. You see, the activator does all the work. They're the ones that keep the QSOs and the logs. And then when they submit their logs, and they're motivated to do it because they want credit for being an activator, the byproduct is you as a hunter get credit for that. And I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully, my um, uh, log here in a little bit from the POTA website. So, first of um, the websites I want to show you is parksontheair.com. And, and by the way, I should have said at the beginning, uh, this presentation I'm going to have uh, as a PDF with live links. So, uh, Glenn, I'm hoping maybe we can make it available. Uh, and if there's something you like about this or you want to uh, visit one of these websites, you can't remember where they are, uh, you'll have a live link on the PDF and just go to it and you can you can go right there and then save it if you like it. So let's see if this pulls up. Hopefully this does. So here we go. This is uh, the parksontheair.com. Uh, there's a lot of information here. I could take all night with just this. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things. And I'm going to direct your attention over here where you can see where it says help getting started. 
and then sign up for POTA. That's the first order of business if you want to participate in Parks in the Air because you have to have an account to be able to get credit as a hunter so they know how to give you credit or as an activator. So you sign up for POTA. Uh, I've already signed up so uh, you can see here's my call up there. So yours will look a little different if you've not signed up but this is where you go to sign up. You just click on again uh, help getting started sign up for POTA. The other thing I want to show you on this particular website is here where it says rules, FAQ, guides, so on and so forth. A lot of information here. I'm just kind of touching the highlights tonight, hopefully to whet a little interest in Parks in the Air with you. Uh, but there's a lot more information and a lot more depth on this website. So I encourage you to, to look at this section as well. So this is, uh, again, parksontheair.com. There's going to be another website we're going to use where all the spotting and everything is, and we'll see that in a little bit. Okay. Um, now, let me show you just as a hunter, uh, everybody's mileage may vary, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, and you will probably find a way to make it more efficient and better and more fun, but this is, is how I have kind of developed uh, my own little system for hunting parks quickly, efficiently, and try to beat the pile up if I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is locate an interesting park using that POTA app website. We haven't seen it yet. We're going to see that website in a minute. But right here is just a, a picture. You can see a couple of spots from this website. And let's say that I really want to try to contact NK4Q, who's at uh, Olita River State Park in Florida. So you can see here he's been spotted. Um, I can see what frequency is on. I know which park he's at. The designation for the park, by the way, you'll see this, K-1908. That's the designation for this particular park. All POTA parks have a designation, and, and you'll want to know that. So I've decided I want to try to reach him. So the next thing for me, what I do, I use uh, N3FJP. Uh, logging software. I know there's a lot of different logging softwares uh, out there. Uh, I'll tell you how I do it with this. You can probably do the same thing with yours. Um, I use the software, the logging software, to actually tune my radio using the cat control. So I have to be spinning around and changing you know, to uh, different bands and things like that because uh, I want to operate kind of quickly, especially when the conditions are really good and you really want to be able to work you know, several parks. So I'll tune by just typing in the frequency uh, into the software, and I'll show you that in a minute, how that looks. Uh, I make my QSO, and then um, going back, let me go back here, I cut and paste the activator's call. So here's his call, NK4Q. I just highlight that, cut and then paste it into the log. I cut and paste the park designator and park name into the N3FJP uh, log. You can see here, let me show you where, right here, that is what I cut and paste. It has the park designator and the name. So I put that into the contents um, of, the, of the log. And then I just enter the C, uh, receive and send report and submit the QSO to the log. Uh, by tuning with the software, I don't have to enter the frequency. It's already entered there uh, for me uh, with the software when I just use the software to tune the radio. And also the time is automatically there. So the only thing I have to worry about is doing a little bit of cutting pasting and then putting the signal report in and I'm done. Now, you don't have to do that. Remember I said at the beginning, it is the activator who's going to log the call, the QSO, and give you credit. But I like to have that because I like to keep track of who I've talked to and what I've done. So this isn't anything that I have to submit. This is for my own purposes, but it go, goes so fast that I just do it that way. And it kind of works out pretty well. Uh, so here is my um, N3FJP work screen. And so, uh, let's see, let me, right over here where it says call, when this is blank, 
uh, this is where you put your frequency in, in this software. You put your frequency in there, hit tab, and it will enter the frequency and tune your radio right there immediately. Um, then uh, I put uh, the call sign, like I said before in the previous screen, in there, hit return. I'm linked with my software to QRZ. You could be linked with a lot of different services, but QRZ uh, fills in, you see down here, Robert H. Miller and all of this information is uh, put in there. And with QRZ, what I like about it, I should have used Glenn's, doggone it. Anyway, you get the picture from the profile on QRZ. Glenn has this cool picture of him at his shack. I should have used that for this. But in this case, this particular person is obviously uh, a fan of aviation, so that pulls up. And then down here where you can see K-0797 Wright Brothers National Memorial, that's where I cut and paste, put that in. So I did a couple of cut and pastes. I put uh, the signal report in and then hit uh, log contact and it happens just really fast, within seconds. And I moved on to the next park. So I've logged it, uh, even though I didn't have to for credit, uh, this person is doing it for me, but I have a, a record of it. Okay, so I've talked about this Poda dot, uh, app website. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to pull it up live. So um, hopefully, yeah, good. So uh, I'm signed in, you can see up here, but what I wanted to show you here, there's about five things on this uh, website I want you to be aware of and you'll be able to explore all this on your own. But this is the spotting page. So this is right now. If I had my little radio here all fired up, we could tune it up and let's see who we could reach here. Because this is who's on right now. Okay, so we're looking at this live. So let's see if there's something that's interesting here. Um, looking for a park that, uh, or an area that haven't seen. There's Michigan, let's see, Alabama. That's an interesting one there. Um, oh, Oregon, Fort Stevens State Park, been there, great place, beautiful trees. Um, so this is on 40 meters. So this is uh, W7WGC. Uh, he's at Fort Stevens State Park and, and the um, locator for that is K- Oh, did you just see that it disappeared by the way? Everybody catch that? I was gonna talk about that next, but it just happened. This is live, it's a POTA, uh, POTA spotting page, and what happens is that every, if you look up here where it says data will refresh in 40, 39, 38, it refreshes, and so when somebody's just done a spot, they tend to go up to the top of the list. So you know who's current and who's there and have a pretty good idea of what's going on. So when I do my cut and paste, I have to kind of do it pretty quickly. You don't want to wait because you can cut and all of a sudden you come back to get the park and now it's gone. I got to go hunt and find it. But anyway, this is the, the page for, that I use to hunt where I want to find an activator. And I do it either by what the propagation is letting me do, you know, what's really working right now. Uh, maybe 40 meters is great, and I don't know, 20, I got all kinds of local noise or something like that. In combination with, with uh, is there a park I haven't contacted yet? Because I'm trying to get as many unique parks that have not reached before as possible. And then also an interesting place. Some place that, oh, either I've been there or gosh, I'd like to go there. So anyway, that's what this is. Uh, let me take you over now to uh, show you my log. Um, let's see what I have here. So now this is my log. This is not the uh, my log that I showed you with the FJP software. The, all of these entries were done by the activators crediting me when we had a QSO. Okay. So what was the last one? I haven't worked for a little bit here. So. It was on the 31st, uh, oh, AFR, sure. Uh, Continental Divide Trail, National Scenic Trail. Uh, let's go down here, see if there was something fun that I could share with you real quick. Um, ah, oh yeah. So here is, uh, what was this, on the 26th, 
uh, W6KC um, had kind of a nice little QSO. Sometimes these QSOs go very quickly because you're trying to, they're trying to get as many uh, hunters and I'm trying to get as many parks. So they go pretty fast. But in this case, it was kind of calm. And uh, he was at Santa Monica State Beach from California, been there, been to this uh, beach. And he said, yeah, I'm at lifeguard stand number five. It's right to the right of the parking lot. I know exactly where it is. That's the best place to be because waves are great right there. You know, you can boogie board and everything else. And so, I mean, I, I couldn't see, but in my mind's eye, I sure could. And we were just chatting about that. So that's an example for me why it's kind of fun. And it's a neat thing to do, kind of vicariously travel a little bit. So anyway, this is um, the log. Uh, you'll see I have, what, 1,587 contacts uh, that have been credited. Uh, let's see what else I want to show you real quick. There are awards that you can win. And I think Vincent was talking in the other room about getting caught up in awards. It, it's easy, isn't it, Vincent, to get caught up in that. I like talking to people, but you know, the awards are kind of fun. And so um, the, the latest one, the one I was really working at, was getting 1,000 unique parks. Now you see I had 1,500 or so contacts, but many of those were repeats because a lot of activators, quite frankly, go to some of the same parks that are easy to get to. Uh, you know, a lot of people do the Grand Canyon, right? You know, a lot of people do a lot of the, the parks that are easy to get. As you start building up the, this number, um, working towards 1,000, now you're having to find people that are at parks that aren't activated as often or um, that uh, you can hear for finally at once, something like that. But anyway, this is a little dashboard. Uh, I guess right now I'm at 1,013 parks. These are the unique parks that, you know, uh, separate parks, uh, not repeats. Uh, there's a thing called late shift. Dale was just showing me, you got your, uh, where is it? You got your uh, uh, late shift uh, uh, certificate there. Uh, here, late shift means that you're working from 000 Zulu, I mean seven o'clock our time, uh, for the next 12 hours. So basically at night, you know. And sometimes that's a little harder because first of all, who wants to activate a park in the middle of the night? But people do, you know, so if you want to, try to do a late shift, that's always kind of fun. So I'm kind of working up to, I guess, 500 is my next goal or where I'm at. So part of it's about, I guess I'm a little bit competitive. Uh, so part of it is about that. But the other part is just about the fun of talking to people, the reason that we love this hobby anyway, okay? So let me show you, I said there was about five things I'm gonna show you, let me move on real quick. Uh, stats, uh, let's see if we can get there. So uh, just show you this real quick. So this is uh, for me, uh, you just kind of overview. This is um, uh, my hunts. So Alaska, I've had eight QSOs with four unique parks. Uh, England, eight QSOs, six unique parks. Hawaii, two QSOs. Hawaii is hard for me. I just have an end fed half wave, you know, and so uh, nothing fancy. Uh, I want to show you one other thing here. Let me find it real quick. Uh, because it's going to come up in a little bit on this page. Uh, let me go back. Okay. Uh, I've taken you over to the um, logging page. Remember, I get credit uh, by the activators submitting a log with my QSO with them. Uh, if you are an activator, uh, here now, this is new, there's a drag and drop. You'll, que you'll keep your QSOs in a file. It's an ADIF file. I'm going to talk about that in a couple more minutes. But it used to be that you had to create this file, and then you had to mail it, email it, and then it took a little while to get credited. Now you can just drag and drop. So I just want you to be aware that this is here. All of this is on, as you can see up here, poda.app website. Again, you'll have this, so you can just click on this and you'll see it. But I wanted you to know that that exists anyway. And let's see, was there something else I wanted to show you uh, on this? There's so much, so I'm just hitting the highlights. This is an introduction to. Oh, one other thing I want to show you. 
That, I knew there was one other thing. So let's say uh, Dockweiler State Beach. Haven't been there, California. Who knew? Anyway, uh, so I'm going to have a conversation here. And uh, the band is good. I'm able to, to reach uh, California uh, towards evening. And it's, it's sounding really good. And so I can, I can reach him. You know, it's always make, good to make a, a kind of a personal contact if you can. So I want you to show, if I just kind of come over like this, <coughs> do you see what I did? It brought up here uh, his name. And so when you have a QSO, sometimes it's nice, just as you're exchanging signal reports, you know, say, uh, yeah, Frank, you're five and nine. Appreciate the uh, park. Thank you so much. That's a new one for me. And, it's, uh, and he's logged me, and he probably, you'll see some of the software that you can do that with. He's probably done the same thing. Yeah, no problem, Jan. Nice to have you in the log. Thank you so much. Just to have that personal touch. So it's kind of nice just to kind of touch this. So I keep this handy. This is as much as the radio part of me doing parks on the air. This is a great tool, this pota.app website. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so I started in uh, January uh, with Parks on the Air as a hunter, and this is the uh, first part of May, and so I had about 400 QSOs there. So you can see I was having fun. Um, but you know, you just wait for the band conditions to be right, because by this time I'd already been able to reach Hawaii, already been able to reach uh, Alaska up here, uh, I have Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, uh, Costa Rica, and then some uh, European contacts as well. So that's kind of cool. And then, uh, sorry, total vanity. I apologize, <laughs> but I'm really proud of this. Um, this was just a few days ago. When was it? The 26th of August. I finally got my thousand uh, unique parks. And like I said, uh, it's one of those things that you can get parks pretty fast when you start because everything's new. You haven't done it before. But then you start getting some repeats and then you get more and then, you know, they're the same parks over and over again. Try to find those unique ones that nobody's done. So anyway, that's where I'm at right now as a hunter. Um, so how do I become an activator? Let's talk about the activation side now. So to have a um, successful activity, a success, successful activation, you need a minimum of 10 QSOs from a POTA designated park within a single UTC day. So it has to be within one day, UTC time. Um, and if you can log 10 QSOs, you've had a successful activation, you get credit for that when you submit your log. And believe me, the activators, if you think the hunters are competitive, the activators even more so. They really want to work as many parks as they can and, and do as much as they can. I mean, some of these guys are as fast as Mickey here. Look at how fast he's doing these QSOs. I mean, you know, that, some of these guys are just about like that. Okay, so what makes a POTA QSO? What do you need for it to be legal, real? So uh, the exchange is this. In addition to the call sign, at least one other piece of information has to be exchanged. Usually it's a signal report and location. Doesn't have to be. Has to be the call sign and one other piece of information that you exchange. But usually, you know, uh, this is WB5JAN, uh, I'm in uh, Arkansas, AR, uh, you are 5959. Five, Come back. Thank you, Jan, we got you in the log. You're also 5'9", and so on and so forth. So now I've had a successful QSO that can be logged by the activator. Now, the next three screens are a little dense. I'm going to try to get through it. But just so you're aware of, as an activator, you have more responsibilities than the hunter. Hunter, the thing that I've been doing is easy. Just get on, try to find somebody. And then they'll take care of all the work. I just collect the awards. But activator, a little bit more to it. Activations may only be performed in parks in POTA's designated list. That's national parks, state parks, uh, uh, national monuments, national trails, uh, national rivers that are designated, any of those, but it has to be on the official list. And you can find that list uh, from the very first website that I showed you. They're all there. The activator and all equipment must be within the park's boundary 
and on public property. And this next one is kind of an interesting one. If a trail system, because there are trail systems that uh, are part of POTA entities, uh, or a river is designated as a POTA entity by itself, not as a park having a defined boundary, the activator and the station equipment must be on public property within uh, 30 and a half meters, 100 feet, from the edge of the trail or river. They don't want you to be on the John Muir Trail in California with about this wide, way up in steep mountains, and then set up with your hex beam right there, right in the middle of the trail as the guys come along. So obviously you can't block that. So as long as you're within 100 feet if it's a trail, and obviously I don't think they want you in the river either. So within 100 feet, you're okay. Uh, let's see, did I skip one here? Uh, Bands and modes. All bands, all modes are available to the activator based on their license class, uh, may be used in parks in the air. The only thing you can't use is a land repeater. So, that leads me to your question, I think. Um, how many technicians do we have? Okay, wonderful, wonderful. You can do POTA. Here I'm talking about 20 meters, 40 meters, blah, 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 blah. You have everything you need for POTA. In fact, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give you a hint of something I would like to do, but maybe you guys will do it first. Go up to Mount Magazine. Who knows Mount Magazine? One of the highest points in Arkansas. Beautiful state park there, by the way. The yeah. yeah, is it the highest? Yeah. And, and there is a fantastic view from up there. Oh, it seems like you can see half of the state from up there. Go up there with your car, with your bofang, Put a little magnet mount on the roof. Park, uh, there's one of the overlooks where you can park and you look out the window and you have this incredible view. Get on uh, Simplex 14652 or whatever you choose. Uh, you might want to spot yourself, let people know that you're going to be there. And if you can get 10 people, just call CQ, Parks on the Air, give them the park designator. And if you can get 10 people to call you back, guess what? You've done a successful activation. So absolutely, you can be uh, a Parks on the Air participant with a technician class. And remember, I'm focusing on uh, single sideband. You know, just as Don had talked about, and we were talking about, you can use any mode. You can use digital modes. You can use CW. So with technician class, there are there are CW bands that you can uh, use, so everybody in this room can participate in POTA if you want to. Uh, power limits. POTA does not have a power limit, but you must still adhere to the legal limits based on your license class and the band plans and use the minimum transmitter power necessary. In the real world, what I have found is that uh, most activators, uh, if they have a QRP radio, they're running it right around one watt up to maybe five, even if it'll do higher than that. You know, they, they just try to really see what they can get with one watt, you know. And if you have a 100 watt radio, a lot of uh, the hams I've heard will run about 20 to 50 watts because many of them are running off of battery. And it seems that around 20 to 50 watts gives you the best bang for your buck for battery life versus signal output. And so, you know, if uh, you have a battery and you only go 20 minutes, that's a little tough. But a lot of guys can go, you know, they can stretch a couple hours with, with their batteries if they bring the power down a little bit. That's part of the fun as a hunter, by the way. I like working those low power stations. See, can I really work that guy in South Dakota and he's on five watts with my crummy little station? I don't have Glenn's you know, million dollar station, I have my little thing. Yeah. Sorry, Glenn, I love you. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so what do I use for an activation? Well, you're seeing it over there on the table. Um, so remember that first slide where I had all that equipment and all that stuff and I said you need all this for POTA? Actually, simple is better, remember? What I use is a 1979 TS120S, uh, hot radio back in the day, has a decent receiver. Anything you can adjust, you're looking at, and there's not many knobs on it. Well, for POTA, that's perfect. 
You don't want to be messing with stuff. You want to be making contacts if you can. You either, either you are activating and you want to listen and it has a decent receiver, um, or you know if you're going to hunt while you're out uh, activating or you're out camping or whatever else. So I know there's a lot of fancy things, but I use that 1979 radio. I love it. You know, it's a brick. And then um, for me, that Wolf River coil really does well. Uh, it's set up for 20 meters now. I just haven't raised the whip. It goes up uh, 108 inches, I think it is. Um, in fact, Glenn was with me when I uh, did an activation at Fort, uh, Lake Fort Smith State Park. And I wasn't in a great spot. And if you know Lake Fort Smith State Park, it's kind of down in a hole. You know, you think, who, who are you going to reach down there? You know. Well, I had 100 CUSOs, one of which was Spain. I think it was in that thing I showed you earlier where it had every place I'd reach, Spain was there. It was from that, from that setup right there. So, you know, if the band's right, everything seems to work, right? Okay, um, spotting, you can spot yourself uh, or somebody else can spot you. Remember I said that spotting page updated and you, about every 60 seconds? Well, you know, people will spot you and sometimes you can ask them to do that. But like I said, for you, for instance, if you go up to Mount Magazine, spot yourself. You can do that. Go up there and put your magnet mount on, like I said, two meters, one, four, six, five, two, and see if you can get 10 QSOs. And then you are a parks on the air activator. Okay, uh, some of you guys know this guy. I've worked Michael a few times. I uh, just want to give you a, a brief video clip of what a typical QSO might sound like for parks on the air. So let's see if this works. First of all, this is KB9 VBR Parks on the Air, QRZ. Uh, the Whiskey 8 Echo Station. Whiskey 8 Japan Echo Sugar. Uh, Whiskey 8 Julia Echo Syrup. Uh, got you 5 9 here into Wisconsin, park number 1472. Back to you. Uh, QSL, Michael, I got you 5 9 plus here into uh, Northwest Ohio. Uh, you camping there for the weekend? Roger, roger. We're camping here at uh, Pottawatomie State Park and uh, we're going to enjoy the uh, pleasures of Door County on Saturday and Sunday I'm riding in the Door County Century, so it's going to be a great weekend. Uh, QSL, sounds like we're going to have good weather too. Yeah, we're good one. Thanks for the park and, and 73. 73 and take it easy, stay safe. This is KB9 VBR, Parks on the Air, QRZ. Okay, so that's uh, kind of a typical thing. Now, sometimes it's crazy because um, there are pileups and everything else, and then you're just trying to get in and get a decent QSO, just exchange the basic information and move on. But sometimes you have a little bit of time, and that's when I really enjoy it, to be able to talk to people that way. Uh, let's see, we're heading in towards the end here. Uh, let's talk about uh, how you get credit for all of this as an activator or as a hunter. Uh, first thing, remember I said you had to have 10 uh, QSOs to have a uh, activation count uh, and get credit for it as an activator? Well, sometimes that doesn't happen. But you might have had eight people who contacted you and they're relying on you to give them credit. So one kind of rule of thumb that uh, is kind of a thing you don't want to violate is uh, if, even if you do an activation and you only got eight and you didn't get to 10 for whatever reason, uh, go ahead and submit the log so that the hunters, those who took the time to hunt you, will get credit. So that, that's one thing. I'll get your question in just a sec. Um, the other thing here, uh, multiple activities at the same park in the same state, province, entity, and in the same UTC day count as a single activation. So I'm at Lake Fort Smith State Park with Glenn and uh, I get about 15, 20 QSOs, and then uh, my wife says it's time to eat. That took precedence over getting QSOs. So we did that, had Glenn over, ate, then I was tired, took a nap, but then I wanted to get back to it, so get back on, different frequency, but yeah, I got about 20 more. You know? Then I wanted to work a little late shift, but I wanted to do it you know, within the same day. So I did that and uh, ended up with uh, 100 QSOs, but, and they were one activation because it was in the single, the single day. You had a question. Um, I was going to ask, if you, you don't get QSOs, and do you have just the 
submit them as soon as the transmission is over? Great question. Great question. Thank you. Uh, the question was, do you have to submit your QSOs and the log right away, as soon as that's over? The answer is no. Uh, usually, and I'm going to get to that here in a second, and I think it'll be clear. It's kind of the last thing we're covering. Um, it's good practice to try to do, uh, have your log submitted as soon as possible. But if you're out camping, you know, and you may not have a great Wi-Fi signal or whatever, you know, you're not going to be able to do it till you get home or something. Uh, although some, sometimes I'm surprised um, when I was getting close to a thousand parks, you know, and I thought I had enough, but uh, all of a sudden here was credit for a QSO that was like a month ago. I guess the, for whatever reason, uh, you know, that happens. You know how it is with QSL. Sometimes you don't get the, the cards for a lot later. Um, anyway, got credit for it and, and that worked out. But try to do it as soon as possible. Okay, so you use an ADIF file to submit for the logs. This is the activator now who's going to get credit for the activation, and you as a hunter will get credit because you're in those logs. Uh, so what do you need to have at the minimum in your log? Well, you need your station call sign. So that is you as the activator. Um, you need the call of the hunter so that they can get credit. You need the QSO date. You need the time. You need the band, not frequency, just band. And you need the mode. Are you working single sideband, CW, what are you working? Those are the minimum things you need, just those. Now people have more in their ADIF file usually, but that's all you need, minimum, to have it count. And so um, remember when I showed you that um, uh, page, the POTA app website, and I took you to a page where I said you can actually drop, uh, drag and drop, your file right onto it. Um, I'm not going to show you this YouTube, but here, if you care to, you can have this uh, PDF file of this whole thing. Just click on this and it'll show you how to do that. Real simple. And that's a relatively new thing. Used to be that you had to do what it says here. You would have an ADIF file that you produced, and then you would email it to your POTA coordinator for your call sign. So uh, what it would look like, the, the, um, the name of the ADIF file would be call sign at park number um, activation date dot ADI. So for an example, this isn't a real one, but uh, WB5JAN at kilo 1515 uh, 2020 11 that, that with those minimum components that I showed you earlier is all that is needed to be able to submit a valid uh, file that everybody will get credit for. And who do you send that to? Well, you send it to your, um, whatever your call sign is, in my case it's a five, I'd send it to k5 at parksontheair.com. That will go to one of several uh, volunteers who work the five area to make sure you get credit as an activator and as a hunter. If you have, obviously as you see here, if you have a, a, a one call, a two call, it would be, you know, K1 at uh, parksontheair.com. So uh, that was the old way of doing it. The new way, drag and drop, real easy. A uh, couple of last things before we end here. Uh, this is uh, the uh, N3 FJP uh, I don't have any connection to them. I paid for the software. I didn't get it for free, but I like it. It works for me. There's other good things. I like it because I use it for POTA for hunting because I put the frequency in and, you know, I can get things logged instantly. Uh, but one I do want to open and show you is Hammers. Hammers here is free. And I'll tell you what I like about it for activating. Um, again, did you hear the word free? That's always good, right? Free. So um, this is, and it was developed specifically for POTA, okay? Um, and here, or I'm gonna, let's see if it uh, will update, there it goes. You'll see it kind of update down here. Anyway, if you're an activator, it's real simple. Uh, when you're in a hurry and you're trying to log these contacts, 
you just put their call sign in. You can see the uh, signal report there. If they happen to be at a park also, you can have a park to park contact and you kind of get credit for that too. I haven't even talked about that, but you would put that there. But basically, all you do is their call sign and the, um, the signal report. Over here on the right, you've already pre-slugged all this. So when I'm at uh, Lake uh, Fort Smith State Park, I had all that in there already. So I didn't have to mess with anything on the right over here. All I was doing with those 100 QSOs is I'd reach somebody, I would uh, uh, put their call sign in here. You would call it up through QRZ. I could see who it was. Oh, Robert, yeah, thank you for uh, contacting me. Appreciate it. You are 5757. Uh, and um, so I'd put the signal report and his report there. So Hammers uh, is a great, great tool as an activator. It's free unless, unless you um, get it from an app store for an iPhone or the um, Google Play Store for, the, um, for your um, um, Android phone. A lot of guys like to use their phone. You'll see videos with guys, they're doing parks on the air and they got their phone. They're, I can't do that, I can't even see it. You know, but some of these guys can, younger people with better eyes. But you know, if you do that or if you use an iPad or something like that, uh, you have to pay for the app. The reason you have to pay for it, the guy has talked about, the developer has talked about that, it says, the only reason I charge is because they charge me to put it on the Play Store. So I charge what the per cost is for that. Other than that, for Windows or for your Mac, it's free, free software. So I wanted to point that out specifically so you could see that. Uh, let's see. What, I'm going to take the time to show you these videos, but again, if you take the PDF and you can click on these. I found these are two very good um, YouTube guides to Parks on the Air. Uh, I've given you the highlights, just the overview. This will give you a little more depth and, you know, uh, both these guys have done a pretty good job with that. So I would encourage you, if you're interested, you know, get the PDF of this thing and click on some of these and I think you'll, you'll learn a little more. So, my final thoughts, and I'll take your questions in a little bit. You know, uh, I'm wishing you happy hunting, thrilling activations, now go out and enjoy and celebrate the beauty of nature and the fun of amateur radio. Thank you for listening. I know, uh, questions, Neil? One tip, uh, if you're going to activate, my first activation attempt was at uh, Prairie Grove. State uh, Battle? Field Park? And my yes. My recommendation is, is find a ranger. I don't care what park you're going to. My first trip to Prairie Grove, I ran into retired gunnery sergeant Smokey. <laughs> <laughs> and he very quickly let me know that if I pound a stake in the ground, or if I take one shave of bark off a tree, he owns me. <laughs> so I explained to him, okay, I'm going to put paracord over a limb. I'm going to run my line as a sloper and put a bungee cord around another tree. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so I asked him for his badge number and wrote his name down. Yeah. Neil breaks, uh, brings up a really good point. Uh, it's probably a good idea just to let, you know, the local ranger or somebody know what you're doing uh, and that you're very aware of the environment and things like that. And a lot of parks, you're not able to put things up in trees, uh, certainly pound things into the trees. That's a big no-no, you know, and, so, and, and uh, even sometimes, you know, pound steaks. That's kind of why I like this thing. Um, this uh, that just sets on the ground and the radials just lay on the ground and then um, uh, I used to just put rocks on the legs just to keep out of the wind although I learned a great idea about using um, what are those bags Dale? Bean bags. Bean bags. Yeah the bean bags from the 
Cornhole, cornhole bag, yeah. Yeah, and there'll be weights just to hold that. Thank you, Neil, that was great. Yes, sir, Mr. Glenn. How many uh, are on that list and are there? You know, that's a great question and I don't know, but I, uh, what I can tell you are two things. Number one, the way to find it is go to that first website and it'll list that. But I can tell you this, it has grown so much, folks, that it used to be just U.S. parks. You might have noticed on my log, I had England and I had several other countries. Uh, it has really grown and now it's fun to find parks. Uh, I have several from England. Uh, right in an area that I know. So that's kind of a kick. I picked that up while ago and it was over 2,000. Thank you. I remember it was 2,243, but it was over 2,000. And boy, if you can activate a park that doesn't get activated much, oh, are you going to be popular? Are you going to be dealing with pileups? It's kind of like DX, right? You know, if you go on a DX position, expedition or something like that. Yes. This is probably an obvious question, but can you have a single POTA account and as a station and every, you bring like two people and they both transmit, can you both log it at the same time? That's an excellent question actually. No, it's not obvious at all and you hear that a lot. You'll hear, uh, I'll contact somebody and they'll uh, uh, come back with me and then they'll say, stand by for my second op. Sometimes it's their spouse. You know, and then they, uh, mm -hmm. we kind of repeat the QSO, even though we already talked about what the exchange is and the signal report. We do that because he or she, the second op, has their own account. So you can use the same radio and this, that, and the other, but you know, you have to have a separate QSO and have your own account so it can work that way. And, and a, I, I hear a lot of husband wife teams, and, and that's wonderful, you know. Nine thousand. Oh my goodness. Okay. So do they rate them like DX countries, or is there some that have never been active? That's a great question too. No, uh, they don't, and it's probably because the POTA program is relatively new, and I think as it kind of grows, you might get that kind of rating uh, system you see elsewhere. Um, you know, if you do this a lot, I I, I just hear that okay, I got that one, I got that one, you know, but you'll know when you haven't. But uh, right now, there isn't a system for that. Uh, yes, yes. Hey, what happens if you're activating and some people call you, they're not registered, and you make a QSO with them? What happens to them? Do you still report them? Uh, as the activator, I'm sorry, let me make sure I understand what you're asking. If you're, if you're the activator, yes. and someone calls you who's not registered, would you still report that? Yeah, what'll happen is that it'll be in your log, just like anybody else, because you're going under the assumption that they are. If it's not, the, the, the software, the POTA software, you know, that assigns all the credit and everything else, just ignores it, because there's no place to give credit to. So that's why I said the first thing is go on the website, you know, parksontheair.com, set up a, an account. It's free, it takes a couple seconds, and then, then when you do this, you'll get credit, because you're in there. Yes, sir? Does the does the POTA software, does it meet, the, the QSOs meet there, or does it meet in Logbook of the World? Or, I guess my question is, does it wind up eventually in Logbook of the World from the activator side? A perfect question. No, it doesn't. But here's what, um, uh, that's a really good question, because I didn't cover this. I was also trying to get my worked all states while I was kind of doing this as well. Or grids or... Bingo, yeah, or, or counties or whatever. So um, I'm getting credit for the parks, but that does it, that's all it does. It goes only to POTA. But usually, and a lot of times I'll ask, you know, are you um, submit to QRZ, do you submit to um, um, LOTW? Um, because I was trying to get my LOTW, you know, worked all, all states. And so a lot of times, you know, and I did this, and, and hopefully activators do, you send your logs to POTA, but you also send the information to Logbook of the World uh, and or QRZ or whatever other service you're using. Great question. So, so Thank you. So still on your part, if you're 
you're an activator, it's still on your personal log. So yes. When you, when you update your personal to LOTW, then they'll meet there. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. And that's why, actually, I should have said that. That Thank you for that question. Uh, when I was telling you how I log uh, my, uh, uh, when I'm hunting, I log my own even though I'm getting credit from POTA. I do that because I'm hoping that they will uh, upload to Logbook of the World and I'll get credit for that QSO. Uh, or QRZ or whatever, so that's why I do that. So I submit, I submit mine too as a hunter, so I can try to get that. So they can be honest. So if they have a huge weekend from Marrera Park, they could actually get worked all states. From that QTA. You, if you, oh yes, yeah. If if you have propagation, that is that could happen. Yes, sir, Glenn. Um, I was listening, and I'm hearing these guys. You know, and they're calling. CQ parks on the air, and they'll stop, and, and somebody else will be in another park. So they say it's park to park. Is there some kind of special deal going on? If you got That's a great question, Glenn. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's not unusual to have a pileup. We've all heard pileups, you know. Uh, so you'll have a pileup, and somewhere in that pileup, you as an activator hear park to park, park to park. Okay, you're going to try to dig that guy out, or that gal out, because if you work that person, now you, you have worked them and they get credit, you get credit, but there's another, I didn't show you all the awards, you get awards for working people park to park. They might be on five watts, you're on five watts, right? You know, they're in North Dakota, you're in uh, Arkansas, and you know, that's kind of a neat deal. So uh, a lot of times if you're, Actually, I did that when I was activating. You know, I did a lot of park to park. I'm reaching out as a hunter, but I'm saying park to park. I went to the top of the list because I was park to park because everybody's getting credit, right? On all sides. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of a neat deal. Thank you. That was a great question, Glenn. I, I don't want to drone on too long. Any other questions? I don't want to bore you too much. I'm just hoping to give you a little bit of excitement about parks in the air and why I enjoy it so much. It's a kick. It's fun. Thanks again. Thank you. I, and I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, I was wondering the ADIF format file, is that the output of the logging software? Yeah, if you use hammers, for instance, it'll do that for you automatically. It'll save it, and it's, it's as simple as it can be. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'd like to uh, present this award to uh, Jan, WB5JAN, for your outstanding presentation at our meeting on September 1st, 2022, on Parks on the Air Operation. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. He was, he was being pretty optimistic. It said outstanding. He didn't hurt it yet, so... <laughs> Thanks, Tom.